You're watching NFL Daily. I am Tom Downey as we continue to look at Mel Kuyper's top 10 prospect rankings. Today, it's a look at the running back position, which is always a bit interesting and divisive given how impactful the destination ends up being for backs. At number one for Kuyper, Brees Hall out of Iowa State. Hall has been a true workhorse back for the Cyclones for several years now, including this one. He's got great vision. He's very valuable in the passing game as well. The volume numbers look incredible. He's got a great nose for the end zone. I mean, he's able to be a three-down back because he can catch passes out of the backfield. Look at that. Over 1,000 yards, 18 touchdowns this year already. And frankly, that's some slight regression from last year's production. Now, I like Hall a lot. My concern is I don't know how truly top-end explosive he really is, but make no mistake, he is at minimum, I believe, a top three back in this year's class. Now, if you want more NFL draft videos, maybe some more prospect rankings, some mock drafts, some draft buzz and rumors as the big days approach later on in the offseason, then like today's video. It helps me show the bosses, see... See James, see Brett, they do want more draft coverage. So help me out by liking today's video. Number two, Kenneth Walker out of Michigan State. This has been, I think at the running back spot, the biggest stock up of any pr prospect this year. Wake transfer has had a massive breakout year. He is a very tough runner. He breaks a ton of tackles and he thrives after contact. His, uh, this is based on PFF from I think the week before this one. 77 missed tackles, has almost a thousand yards after contact. That's some good stuff right there. Now the reason why Walker I think for Kuiper does not make, or does not rank number one, why he's not number one for me, passing game. Only 12 catches. Part of that is scheme. I get that. But for Walker to take that next step forward, show some growth as a pass catcher so you can be a true three-down back. We got several more names to get to. In fact, it's more than Ted because Kuiper's cheating on his list. Before we get to my actual best prospect, he's number three on Kuiper's list, I want to hear from you guys. Who do you believe, it's still you can change your mind at some point, who do you think is the best running back prospect in this year's class? If you're watching on YouTube and the ad break comes, take advantage of it. Head down to the pinned comment and type your responses. Number three, my way too early, or still too early, I should say. Number one, Isaiah Spiller. He's shown growth as a pass catcher. That's what I wanted to see. I know there's been some, ah, oh, Spiller doesn't have great explosiveness. I think he's just as explosive, if not more so, and maybe I'm wrong, than Brees Hall. I think there is a very strong argument for Isaiah Spiller as RB1. He's taken that step forward as a pass catcher. The a and offense has been a bit weird at points this year, but I like Isaiah Spiller as a back. Is he a round one prospect for me, though? No, uh, there is not one for me at all this year, and I wonder if there will even be a back taken in the first round, the modern day NFL getting away from that high level of investment in what is the one of the more replaceable positions on a roster. So what do you think? Will a running back be drafted in round one this year? One for yes, at least one will. Zero for no. Number four, the surprise of the running back rankings. That is Devontae Price out of FIU. He's number four. On Kuiper's, he is a big back, listed at 6'2", 215. He moves pretty well for his size. But he hasn't been crazy high productive, although he's been solidly productive this year. 5.3 yards per carry is passable. You'd hope for a bit more against lesser competition, but I get O-line's a factor in that. Doesn't bring you much in the passing game. I, I think this is a, I'll, I'll put it nicely, I'm surprised. Kuiper had price this high. There are several good small school prospects. I, I just, I wouldn't have put price in my top five. But it's the draft. It's an opinion in the end. Now, if you want to make some money betting on the NFL or taking some prop bet action on BetUS as the draft gets closer, I love prop bets. I hit them every year. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. When you use that URL and use promo code NFLDAILY, when you sign up and deposit at least $100, 
here is what you guys can get. A, a 125% deposit bonus. Pretty great deal right there. 100 bucks in, boom. Extra 125 to bet with. And we at Chat Sports will hook you guys up with an NFL jersey. Now, we don't have every single player for every single team, but we got tons of jerseys for your favorite team. I can promise you that. So email us, jersey at chatsports.com if you want in on that deal. I'll put the email in the comment section for you guys. We will need your BetUS account number, a screenshot of your first bet. If you got questions, whatever, email us, jersey at chatsports.com. You'll get the list of all the information that we need, which please follow the instructions. Namely, make sure you put down at least 100 bucks by going to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that URL. It'll take you right into the BetUS site. And then use promo code NFL Daily for 125% deposit bonus. Number five, one of my preferred favorites here. I think he should have been four. Kyron Williams out of Notre Dame. The production is down this year. Make no mistake about that. But he's a three-down back who can catch and do a pretty damn good job as a pass protector as well. If Williams, who is a bit undersized, can test well, I think his stock could go up. The Notre Dame O-line, not as great as it was last year. That's a big factor in the dip in production. But as a pass catcher, even as a pass blocker, I like what I've seen out of Kyron Williams. Excuse me. No issues there being him uh, RB5 this year. Number six, Pierre Strong. Now, this small school guy I like including if you're Kuiper, which, of course, he did. FCS All-American last year. And the last name of Strong is a fitting name. The testing is going to matter. Make no mistake about that. That's how it works for these small school guys. But he's been very productive. Seven yards per carry this year for South Dakota State. N enough, a bit on the lower end, pass production in the passing game, but I like it from that perspective. He runs tough. The testing will matter, but for an FCS kid, it's probably one of those names to keep an eye out for. Now, if you want more free daily videos here on the NFL and the NFL Draft as well, subscribe today. It is 100% free here at Chat Sports, and it always will be. So don't miss out. Just hit that big red button right now. Number seven, out of Minnesota, Mohamed Ibrahim, who, he was awesome against Ohio State. I mean, that, he was torching them. Here's the problem. It's twofold. Number one, Ibrahim doesn't offer much as a pass catcher. That's got to be checked out, because if you can't catch passes, your value plummets from an NFL standpoint and from a draft perspective. He also suffered that season-ending Achilles injury. Yes, he was running all over OSU, and that's a big deal. But he's out for the year. It will take some recovery time. So Ibrahim offers some high-risk, high-reward. Achilles injuries are not great for a back. If he comes back to his full form, he could be a draft steal. I hope he gets healthy because it would be a damn shame if you missed out on his NFL career because of that injury because he was playing so well against OSU. Number eight, Brian Robinson. Oh, look, yet another Alabama running back. He's talented, too, by the way. He got a bigger workload this year as both a rusher and as a pass catcher. And the, the results have been pretty solid. Almost got 1,000 yards this year, a lot of touchdowns, 23 catches. I like seeing my guys get over 20 yards per catch. Not quite 10 yards per carry, so he's not like a true dynamic split him out wide, but he can catch pass as a safety valve. That's at minimum what you need in a runner. He's not as good as some of those recent Bama backs, but if history tells us anything, he'll have a nice little NFL career. I want you guys now to name an underrated running back prospect this year. There are several that did not crack T Kuiper's top 10, but that's how it typically goes. So head down to the comments section and let me know who's being slept on this year. One of Kuiper's preferred sleepers is Rashad White out of Arizona State. Big play threat for the Sun Devils. A and admittedly, a limited sample size, 10 yards per carry last year, which he was never, ever going to be able to sustain. But he's got six this year on under 150 carries and 14 touchdowns. He can catch passes as well. Got a pretty big build there at 6'2", 210. His listed size, you know how those are sometimes outright lies for NFL teams. I like White. 
Bit of a sleeper name. A good one, though, to keep an eye out for come draft season. Kuiper cheated at number 10, as he did on his quarterback list. 10A, because apparently 10 wasn't a fair number to do. Travis Dye, shifty little runner, able to make some guys miss, offers value again in the pass-catching side. His efficiency hasn't really dipped after C.J. Verdell's injury. I like Travis Dye. I worry he's nothing special, but I think he's a borderline top 10 back right now. Tyler Goodson, then, is 10B. Look, he can be deadly with the ball in his hand. My buddy Thor over at NBC Sports calls him spin shady. I'm inclined to agree. Quality pass catcher can bust some big plays, has that spin move. The Iowa offense doesn't normally lend itself to high efficiency, but the volume's been pretty solid for Goodson. Maybe he's a day three guy. If that's the case, I like him in that range. Finally, 10C, because there were three ties, apparently. Whatever, it's more players to talk about. I, I won't complain. C.J. Verdell, who kind of falls in that Muhammad Ibrahim situation. I like him. He's a good football player. He's undersized in terms of height, but thick build at 2'11 and runs powerfully. Season ending, we assume the Oregon staff was kind of quiet about it, which I hate. Anyway, season ending leg injury interjects some drama into how he will be viewed. Thought he ran pretty well against Ohio State, so too did Travis Dye. If he comes back healthy, I think he could be a day three steal. Now, Oregon's got two backs this year. Kind of crazy, right? Who is the better one? Type D for Travis Dye or type in V for C.J. Verdell? All right, the other backs. I think Zonovan Knight should have been on here. He has been awesome for NC State. I love him. Sincere McCormick out of UTSA, one of several smaller school backs who I like. Zach Charbonnet has thrived in the UCLA-style offense. Eric Gray of Oklahoma and Kennedy Brooks both have not performed as well as I thought they were going to, but I still like their upside. I think part of that is the O-line for the Sooners, not as good as what it's been in the past. And then Chris Rodriguez from Kentucky, battering Ram back. He could be a nice little day three sleeper. We will have more NFL videos every single day for you guys. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe right now.